and on this test. And that's going to help propel us into what we're going to be learning today. So if you guys remember, when I was asking you to solve a trinomial, basically the first thing we had to do, if you guys want to think about this, is step one was to do what? Step one, we're trying to solve a quadratic. We want to make sure. We, want, we got to make sure our equation is set equal to 0. Yes. I would definitely be writing this down Why right now. Why are you allowed to do that? You're not changing the problem. All you're saying is, I want to find the values of x when y is equal to 0. Okay. I mean, just think about it. All we're doing is, here's a quadratic. There's the y coordinates. There's the x values. We want to say, well, rather than writing the equation of how y is related to x, we want to find these two points when y is equal to 0. Because that's what the value of y is, mm. is 0. So we say, I want to find the values of x at y equals 0. Now, the next thing is, we need to, um, to so the reason, once we set equal to 0, step two, or next thing to do, well, actually, let's write these in steps. I'm not going to write out the steps, but I'd say, hey, step 1 was set it equal to 0. And actually, when I first taught this, I broke it down like that, right? Step 1, set equal to 0. Step two, you guys had to know how to factor. So in this example, we did a times c and b. a times c, thankfully, a is 1 here. So 1 times 30 is 30. And b is negative 13. So now I need to identify what two numbers multiply, what two numbers multiply to give me 30, but then add to give me negative, negative 10 and negative 3. Right? Um, well, hold on. If you had to do 15, 2, you'd have to do a negative 15 and positive 2, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the only problem with that, though, is negative 15 times positive 2 gives you a negative 30. So if this was negative, you would have to be right and you were wrong. But if it's positive, only you can be right because oh, it was the. Right. But you do see how the difference is, though? It all depends on the matter. Yes? You'd have to do a negative 15. Negative, because what? If you did negative 30, negative 15 times 2. Negative 15 times 2 is negative 30. Negative 15 plus positive 2 is negative 13, right? But here, see, these multiply to give you positive 30, not negative 30. Uh, so now that was step one. Step two was to factor them, right? You rewrite it as a product of factors. Since a is equal to 1, I don't have to use that box thing that we did, right? I can just write them now as my factors. So I can write this as x minus 10 times x minus 3. Does everybody follow me with that? Equal 0, right? right? It's still always equal to 0. Then step 3 was to apply the zero. 0 product property. So we set each of my factors now equal to 0. Right? And then step four is solve. So as I'm teaching you guys what to do, as I'm teaching you guys what to do, I'm giving you guys this step-by-step -step system. And basically, I could have you guys write this down. Step one, set your equation equal to 0. Step two, factor your equation. Step three, since it's factored equal to 0, apply the 0 product property. Step four, solve. OK? Now, that's kind of like the breakdown of it. But there's a couple things I want you guys to identify that the reason why I did this. Because we've already learned this. Why am I going back over this? Because I want to go back over some vocabulary. Ladies and gentlemen, this, what we just identified, when we're solving, we're solving for the zeros. These are what we call the roots. It all depends on if it's an f of x or a y. But when I say, hey, find the roots, they're asking you to solve the zeros. Find the zeros, the roots, the solutions, or the x-intercepts. But those are all different ways that's really all the same thing. These are the zeros. All right? If we are dealing with a function, these are what we call the zeros. If it's an equation, like this one is, these are what we call the roots. Or you can say the solutions. You're solving, right? So that's the solution. Or if you look at this graphically, these are actually also where the graph crosses the x-axis. So these are the x-intercepts. All right? But all, I'm writing you guys all of these because a lot of times we inter interchange them. right? So you've got uh, you to be familiar with saying, hey, if I say what's the zeros, and then the next problem I say the roots, they're the same thing. You're just dealing with either an equation or a function. Then these are what we call the factors. 
right? When you take an equation, when you take an equation and you factor it to a product, what two numbers multiply to give you your equation are what you call your factors. And what do we do with our factors? We set our factors equal to zero, right? You take your factors and you equal them to zero. Then this is what we call our equation, right? It's our equation, or sometimes it will be called a function um, if we're using f of x, right? Or f of x, or you know, h of x, or whatever your input variable is. But I want you guys to understand, you start with an equation or a function. You work into finding the factors. Then you get to your zeros, roots, solutions, and x-intercepts. Does everybody see that? Yes? Yes? That would be an example of a function. Why did we come up, why did people who made math come up with functions? Because a function is a relationship compared to an equation. A 